Hi, it's Richard McLean. There is nowhere left for me to go. I've been asking the government for help. However, it's a tyrannical government who are the ones that are doing the oppressing and they're victimizing me. And, I've, and they've already acted in order that I was literally persecuted to death by a conspiracy to pervert the cause of justice. I have been opposed by a cast of thousands of public officials, all corrupt, and corrupt lawyers and corrupt politicians. And there is no way out of this situation for me. It cannot be expected that I return to work when I'm supposed to be on sick leave and with valid compensations in order to support my return to work. I'm in a situation that is impossible for me to single-handedly oppose. In one week's time, I have to vacate this house that I'm staying in as the guest of Ibrahim from Personalised Support Services, my NDIS provider of whom I'm signed up with. Ibrahim has absolutely failed me because he is aware of this conspiracy to pervert the course of justice and my victimisation and my oppression. Everyone is. He has not acted meaningfully in order to garner um, a financial response in that I could pay him back and get my own place in order to oppose my victimization and my torture or this conspiracy which has vilified me and oppresses me. This oppression has caused death that could be conspiracy to murder. He has had ample opportunity but he has now said it's me who has to move on and there is nowhere for me to go. He's done this to the exclusion of all other political solutions available to me, or at least he could have tried. One way he could have tried is to, be, is to simply ask for a response from Paula Stratton, the person responsible for the public interest disclosures at Department of Social Security. She originally rejected my PID on account of me not being a public official, but I've provided to her four different ways that I'm eligible to make a disclosure under the PID Act, including two ways that I'm a public official. If that corruption is investigated by Paula Stratton of the Public Interest Disclosure at DSS, all of my problems will be solved. They won't though, and the best I can hope for is a compromise with the government who need to acknowledge my victimisation, my oppression, my poverty, my lack of medical care, threats of being killed and threats to kill my dog, a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice that has and is happening, and the violence that has occurred to me, my poverty and my homelessness. Paula Stratton has now failed to acknowledge me, despite me giving her the evidence. There is only two ways it can go now, with the reply she owes me um, immediately. Um, it's immediate because this is an emergency public interest disclosure because of the imminent threat to my welfare, my safety and my life. Way one is that she continues to deny my public interest disclosure after having acknowledged my evidence only days ago and, and does not accept the evidence that I'm eligible to make a PID. Um, this would be more corruption. Way two is she acknowledges the evidence and she approaches me to make the disclosure a reality and protect me. This could be open to compromise. I'm not asking for much initially, just a simple home for my dog and I, medicine, food and internet connection freedom from violence, oppression and victimisation, and freedom from reparations or any legal claims that will be brought against me. Ibrahim could have been the person responsible for sticking up for the underdog and really um, championing my cause, but he's chosen to be scared of his political overlords who would persecute him for having seen to have stuck up for me. 
I offered to pay him for the time I've been in this house and personally compensate him as a bonus as well and make sure that his company, Personalised Support Services, were highlighted to be ethical and actually care for me who is under their care and who has a disability. His company have also refused to sign off on my now documented human rights abuses, victimisation, oppression by a tyrannical Australian government and it's also been refused to be investigated by the Australian Human Rights Commission. This is a brutal miscarriage of justice and indicates just how much the federal government are trying to maliciously harm me. It proves the conspiracy at the highest levels. Everything I say in this video is verifiable with facts that are presented on my facetiously named whistleblowing website, imustbecrazy.com.au. Madness in individuals is rare, but in society, it is the norm. My situation is this. I've never in my 50 years been able to get a lawyer. I cannot report any crime to police or systemic corruption and I am a rejected whistleblower, mainly for not being a public official, despite evidence to the contrary. That is because I'm eligible to make a PID. I worked in a public hospital. I was employed under a government contract. My former partner, Stefan Isonides, was an ASIO employee and I was his family. Australia has um, gay rights and he was my family. I am literally a part of the intelligence community, but excommunicated. And also, the Federal Court now acknowledge and are satisfied that upon the evidence I submitted that I was an employee of DSS. That makes me a public official. All those things qualify me to make a public interest disclosure which has been unanimously um, rejected. <coughs> My situation is this, I have no money. I have not got health care. I have not got my medication, I don't have an advocate, I have no rights in this country, I have no access to the law or equality before it, I'm currently homeless, I have chronic mental illness and a cognitive brain impairment affecting my memory, and I'm the victim of a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. This treatment of me is immoral, it's illegal and it's unethical. I have a clean criminal record. There are two key people who have acted via proxy from afar, who are powerful, influential people with money, political might and privilege. And they together have single-handedly orchestrated this conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. One is Stefan Isonides, my former partner I was engaged to and former ASIO employee. The second is Mr. Russell Ball, a powerful lawyer of immense political might money and privilege who informs government policy and advises the Ombudsman and he also works with work cover and hospitals. The government up to and including the Prime Minister is refusing to acknowledge my factual relationship with former ASIO agent Stefan Isonides in which we're engaged to be married from 2010 to 15 who in 2010 literally drugged and raped me. I cannot report that to police for fear the police will enact the Mental Health Act and incarcerate me, which would vilify me for my well-designed mental illness to the exclusion of all other factors for which the police are consciously aware of. Now, due to my whistleblowing, Isonides has been apparently done for embezzlement of his corrupt finances where he embezzled a million dollars in an offshore tax haven and he's threatened to kill both me and my dog rather than take responsibility and continues to enact family violence by reducting a settlement that is legal and fair. The entire government have his back and even the Prime Minister won't admit the relationship ever existed and he's referred me 
to the Attorney General, Mark Dreyfus, who's never acknowledged me or my calls, and his office has referred me to ISIS, who investigate ASIO, but they already know about the situation and refuse to act. They also referred me to the Commonwealth Ombudsman, and the Commonwealth Ombudsman have also rejected my public interest disclosure, and they refuse to acknowledge any more emails or um, communication. Centrelink, the Tax Office, ASIC, the Office of Prime Minister and Cabinet, the Prime Minister, the Attorney General's Department, Mark Dreyfus, the AAT, AFCA, Australian Human Rights Commission, and the Ombudsman all refuse to legitimise the relationship in order to protect his enormous wealth from a fair, equitable and legal settlement for the time we were together and for which he exploited me. Make no mistake, this is a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. Isonides has single-handedly manipulated an entire government to reject me and not validate the relationship with him in which we were engaged to be married. And this is incredibly unjust, against legal principles, and embodies and elongates the family violence and coercive financial control that he has enacted and currently still enacts over my life. Every day that I live in poverty is another day that family violence wins and another day that the government refuses to intervene and in doing so, amplifies the damage. A very powerful lawyer, Dr. Uh, Mr. Russell Ball, has silenced my legitimate legal evidence um, before um, a tribunal and has slandered my name to the government. He silenced an unfortunate recording and the transcript of that recording at the Health Complaints Commissioner, the Mental Health Complaints Commissioner, the Police, IBAC, the Victorian Inspectorate, APRA, NHP OPC and the Commonwealth Ombudsman where I'm a failed whistleblower and they refuse all further communications. I am right and they are wrong. I am brave and they are weak cowards. I'm being brutally victimised and victimisation is against the law. This movement has redacted all of my prosperity in a way that was systemic and it's political. It can be demonstrated now that the many financial detriments I've suffered over my life and decisions made at government agencies were corrupt, they were predetermined, and, and they were all decisions that acted in order to deny my rightful compensation, settlements, insurance, and winnings. The Office of Prime Minister and Cabinet have lied about my freedom of information when I requested it, and they have protected Steve Isonides and thrown me onto the scrap heap of society. At first, my freedom of information from the Prime Minister's office was considered voluminous and complex, and that would be the case because I was a former illustrator for the Age of the Herald Sun. I have a doctorate. I've worked all up and down this country, country on local, state, federal and international levels, in person and in the media, advocating for people with mental illness and their carers. In addition to that, I'm an exhibiting artist of 30 years and I've wrote a human rights award-winning autobiography that was also St Australia's Book of the Year. I am on the public radar. My former partner is an ASIO agent. Of course I'm on the public radar. It's simply not permissible or possible that my freedom of information be detailed as voluminous and complex, but then they've denied it, saying simply that no documents exist. That's called corruption. The following financial things have been proven now to be um, redacted from me in a unfair, illegal, predetermined and a way set up to fail. I have evidence to the contrary of all these issues and it has been a brutal financial oppression which has had a malicious intention to cause me harm. There's my HGF income insurance, there's my work cover from both 2004 and 2021, there's my business insurance, my TPD insurance 
There's no conciliation with my former partner and I. There's no conciliation with the hospital, Werribee Mercy Hospital, where I suffered a cognitive brain impairment inside the hospital where they owed me a duty of care. There's no conciliation worth over a million dollars at the Australian Human Rights Commission with Australian Super and TAL, which was cooked to fail and was free kick to them in an impartial decision that was totally unfair and predetermined and I've recorded it. The malpractice case of Dr Whitaker was never heard and the evidence is still there. This is a malpractice case. I don't want to be done for extortion now. That is not what has happened here. I have lost over a million dollars too because I've been literally banned at AFCA after being delayed, denied, deferred my justice by Tim Goss, Head of Service Delivery, and that was a malicious way in order to cause me financial detriment and harm, and being banned from a statutory authority as a free citizen of the country who has a clean criminal record is a move that it's unprecedented in its corruption. That's malicious. That's hurt me. And these corrupt public officials are getting away with it. The Attorney General, Mark Dreyfus, will not act. He won't respond to me. And he is a coward because this is a movement which aims to kill me. I know this because I've already literally killed myself as a result of the same persecution in February 2021. And that tragedy was deemed lethal in the hospital freedom of information records. I was accidentally found with no observable pulse, unresponsive, and I was revived from certain death. And the exact same type of systemic oppression and the reduction of all my prosperity that caused the death is happening now and it's happening three years after I was revived. That is a conscious and intelligent methodology by the government with an intention to harm me and it threatens to kill me. It is not cricket. All the public officials, lawyers and politicians who have refused to act and have either not represented me or non validated me, said it's not within their remit, not what we do, or ignored me. They've all cleverly exonerated themselves from the liability of the harm that's already befallen me and the harm should I kill myself right now because mental illness be the scapegoat that is blamed. That is all of their way out and that is how I'm vilified. It's the perfect crime. This treatment of me is not fair and it's been a brutal oppression that is both systemic and political and it has robbed me of prosperity, destroyed my website and business, taken my accreditation so I can work, banned my Facebook, Twitter and LinkedIn profiles. It's um, seen me being under surveillance from federal authorities and my privacy destroyed. I have been violently attacked by government thugs and ran over by a secret government car. Um, I was hurt by authorities. I was threatened with the Mental Health Act by police to the exclusion of all other factors in my life they were aware of and literally run out of town as a vigilante. It's destroyed my reputation. It's maimed my health. I now have a cognitive brain impairment from a suicide attempt. It's destroyed all my worldly goods when Hung Ho, my former landlord, under the direction and care of Worry Mercy Hospital and police, went to my home while I was incarcerated and took everything I own to the tip. It has identified me as a person of interest for the Australian Federal Government and it has brutally victimised and oppressed me and has censored my civil and political rights. It's brutalised my human rights and it's all but destroyed me. This is a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice and it's not okay. I'm asking for the government's help, I'm asking for my family's help or anyone's help. The Charter of Human Rights for a Person with a Disability states that a disabled person, which Australia has ratified in 2008, must be provided for, for reasonable accommodation 
and there is enough in my NDIS plan for my emergency accommodation and medium term accommodation to be paid for, but they have refused to let go of the money. And that is a way that the government has locked up all my funds at the NDIA and they continue to financially harass me. That is not fair. <laughs>
the earth, I love nature, I love my dog, and I really do understand the um, ethical considerations and the perspective of every person who has denied me access, who has um, not helped me, that it's not within their remit, that I don't know a lawyer. Everyone's aware of my situation and I'm now an infamous <laughs> scapegoat. I actually love all people and further to that, I forgive all of my oppressors and I understand that all of you, everyone wants safety, they want love and they want security. Everyone wants that and everyone deserves it. I'm a difficult situation because I've now come out of left field in such a way that if anyone's seemed to be sticking up for me, they'll suffer political reprisals from their peers, from the public officials across the pond, wherever they be, from other politicians or from um, other people in society. And I just want to say that I'm forgiving of every single person that has ever um, not acted to help me or neglected me or oppressed me or redacted my prosperity and I forgive you. It's because I'm a compassionate person and it's because I understand what it's like to be an outsider, what it's like to have nothing and what it's like um, to have no privileges and that is ultimately the thing the reason why no one will help me is because if they're seen to protect me, their privileges and their comfort might be taken away from them. And the world is acutely aware and they've witnessed my destruction over years and I've literally been thrown under the mental illness bus and vilified for it. And people are consciously aware of their own sin and their own judgment and they've seen collectively what has happened to me and they're aware that it too can happen to them. I understand where people are coming from. I understand why you can't be seen to support me or you can't acknowledge facts and I'm compassionate to your situations. But ultimately that doesn't negate that I will be paid and compensated for legitimate things that are owed to me. And it doesn't mean that, um, what was I going to say? It, it doesn't mean that um, I can't be paid because ultimately um, this persecution of me and this way that I'm being sacrificed and consciously and maliciously being forced towards suicide, destitution and homelessness with no rights is the sum of um, sin of humanity. And... Um, this story has got a biblical allegorical um, crucifixion story behind it because I was actually um, an uh, innocent person years ago who was um, compassionate and was sharing my story and I walked the length and breadth of this country and I advocated for people in a way which was bloody saint-like and for it I was vilified and I was persecuted to death much like Jesus, and then something saved me, the, resurrec the resurrection, the hand of God that was beyond my control, and it was fate. And I came back to the planet, and I'm here for a purpose. And, you know, there's an old allegorical story of the light being forsaken, and that's the great sin of mankind. But I'm here, I'm back, and I'm reborn, and I'm here for a purpose, and... If the world continues to forsake me now, and if they um, reject this resurrected being that I am, and throw me under the bus, and actually sacrifice and kill me, then the allegorical story goes that God gets angry. And I've already um, um, been known to know what happens in the end times, framed by the Anthropocene, in the end of... Um, capitalism, past the insect ap apocalypse in the end, end times, and I know what's befalling humanity. And we all have this foreboding of the fear of the unknown and the, the dramatic conclusion to humanity, which we're all consciously aware of, and that's central to the allegorical situation of my story. This crucifixion of me and the way that I will be um, excommunicated and the way I will if nothing is done
be killed or um, forsaken to the point of death and, um, and, and literally um, crucified and exterminated, well, the world gets angry, but I've got a message for you. And that message is that um, we're all here. We all need to be compassionate towards another. We, we all need to understand each other. And we all actually need to be a little bit forgiving in our ways because there is much to enjoy and the world's a beautiful place. And I actually still have, um, I love human beings, but their judgment really makes me sad. And um, I just want a way out of this. And I just wanted to say as a finishing off thing that I actually forgive all my oppressors and I forgive people like Kate Watson from HBA Legal who acted outside of a remit by, by, by intentionally rejecting my prosperity and acting in an illegal way that opposes the Charter of Human Rights. I, I forgive the Prime Minister for not acknowledging quite simply a fact of a relationship. And even Steve Isonides, I forgive him. I actually have love for everyone and I have love for him. He's a sexual abuse survivor. He's had a fucked life. And the only thing he has left um, when his spirit has been so crushed is a, is a very meticulous and conscious way he's manipulating the system and his intelligence is fierce. Um, but all he wants is some comfort and some prosperity and because his parents did not protect him. He, um, he needs that protection of money because um, he has nothing else going for him and he has to convince all the other people around him to look after him and actually care for him and be on his side and that's why I was seen as the enemy. That's why when I went after his money, I end up in the psych ward from him pulling strings. I understand why people don't stick up for me. I understand that you think I'm crazy. I understand that you think I'm on drugs. I understand that you think it's mental illness. Whatever the reason, whether you think I'm a rapist, a pedophile or an extortionist, which all aren't true, I actually am a human being and I deserve um, another go and I deserve my prosperity paid and I'm forgiving of all people and this allegorical story has a conclusion for me and that conclusion is to, to live and thrive and live a simple life that I may be free from victimization and oppression with my beautiful dog and I, and that I um, continue to enjoy the planet because as it stands, I've kind of been crucified and I'm kind of half heaven and half um, earth monkey and sinner just like you. I'm a sinner just like you. And you've all sinned against me and all these organizations Sane Australia, they know who I am, I can't call them. Alan and Lumwin, they know who I am, I can't call them. Victoria University, they know who I am, I can't call them. People with disabilities, they know who I am, I can't call them. AFCA, can't call them. Australian Human Rights Commission, can't call them. The Prime Minister, can't call them. And finally, I'd like to thank my mum and dad for doing what they could with very little resources and for supporting me and believing in me and I'm hopeful for an outcome soon because I deserve a life free from torment and political torture. I deserve my social and political rights to be reinstigated and like I said I forgive all my persecutors and all the people I've mentioned in this um, in, in this um, video. It doesn't negate that I won't be paid and it doesn't negate that I won't be safe. That's the Charter of Human Rights of people with a disability that Australia has ratified in 2008 and I won't accept any less.